March 25th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Deuteronomy chapter 15 and 16 from the Old Testament. At the end of every seven years, you must declare a cancellation of debts. This is the nature of the cancellation. Every creditor must remit what he has loaned to another person. He must not force payment from his fellow Israelite, for it is to be recognized as the Lord's cancellation of debts. You may exact payment from a foreigner, but whatever your fellow Israelite owes you, you must remit. However, there should not be any poor among you, for the Lord will surely bless you in the land that he is giving you as an inheritance. If you carefully obey him by keeping all these commandments that I am giving you today, for the Lord your God will bless you just as he has promised. You will lend to many nations, but you will not borrow from any, and you will rule over many nations, but they will not rule over you. If a fellow Israelite from one of your villages in the land that the Lord your God is giving you should be poor, you must not harden your heart or be insensitive to his impoverished condition. Instead, you must be sure to open your hand to him and generously lend him whatever he needs. Be careful lest you entertain the wicked thought that the seventh year, the year of cancellation of debts, has almost arrived, and your attitude be wrong toward your impoverished fellow Israelite, and you do not lend him anything. He will cry out to the Lord against you, and you will be regarded as having sinned. You must by all means lend to him and not be upset by doing it. For because of this, the Lord your God will bless you in all your work and in everything you attempt. There will never cease to be some poor people in the land. Therefore, I am commanding you to make sure you open your hand to your fellow Israelites who are needy and poor in your land. If your fellow Hebrew, whether male or female, is sold to you and serves you for six years, then in the seventh year you must let that servant go free. If you set them free, you must not send them away empty-handed. You must supply them generously from your flock, your threshing floor, and your wine press. As the Lord your God has blessed you, you must give to them. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God redeemed you. Therefore, I am commanding you to do this thing today. However, if the servant says to you, I do not want to leave you, because he loves you and your household, since he is well off with you, you shall take an awl and pierce a hole through his ear to the door. Then he will become your servant permanently. This applies to your female servant as well. You should not consider it difficult to let him go free, for he will have served you for six years, twice the time of a hired worker. The Lord your God will bless you in everything you do. You must set apart for the Lord your God every firstborn male born to your herds and flocks. You must not work the firstborn of your bulls or shear the firstborn of your flocks. You and your household must eat them annually before the Lord your God in the place he chooses. If they have any kind of blemish, lameness, blindness, or anything else, you may not offer them as a sacrifice to the Lord your God. You may eat it in your villages, whether you are ritually impure or clean, just as you would eat a gazelle or an ibex. However, you must not eat its blood. You must pour it out on the ground like water. Observe the month of Abib and keep the Passover to the Lord your God, for in that month he brought you out of Egypt by night. You must sacrifice the Passover animal from the flock or the herd to the Lord your God in the place where he chooses to locate his name. You must not eat any yeast with it. For seven days you must eat bread made without yeast, symbolic of affliction. For you came out of Egypt hurriedly. You must do this so you will remember for the rest of your life the day you came out of the land of Egypt. There must not be a scrap of yeast within your land for seven days nor can any of the meat you sacrifice on the evening of the first day remain until the next morning. You may not sacrifice the Passover in just any of your villages that the Lord your God is giving you, but you must sacrifice it in the evening, in the place where he chooses to locate his name, at sunset, the time of day you came out of Egypt. 
You must cook and eat it in the place the Lord your God chooses. You may return the next morning to your tents. You must eat bread made without yeast for six days. The seventh day you are to hold an assembly for the Lord your God. You must not do any work on that day. You must count seven weeks. You must begin to count them from the time you begin to harvest the standing grain. Then you are to celebrate the festival of weeks before the Lord your God with the voluntary offering that you will bring in proportion to how he has blessed you. You shall rejoice before him, you, your son, your daughter, your male and female slaves, the Levites in your villages, the resident foreigners, the orphans, and the widows among you, in the place where the Lord chooses to locate his name. Furthermore, remember that you were a slave in Egypt, and so be careful to observe these statutes. You must celebrate the festival of temporary shelters for seven days at the time of the grain and grape harvest. You are to rejoice in your festival, you, your son, your daughter, your male and female slaves, the Levites, the resident foreigners, the orphans, and the widows who are in your villages. You are to celebrate the festival seven days before the Lord, your God, in the place he chooses. For he will bless you in all your productivity and in whatever you do, so you will indeed rejoice. Three times a year all your males must appear before the Lord your God in the place he chooses for the festival of unleavened bread, the festival of weeks, and the festival of temporary shelters, and they must not appear before him empty-handed. Every one of you must give as you are able according to the blessing of the Lord your God that he has given you. You must appoint judges and civil servants for each tribe in all your villages that the Lord your God has given you, and they must judge the people fairly. You must not pervert justice or show favor. Do not take a bribe, for bribes blind the eyes of the wise and distort the words of the righteous. You must pursue justice alone so that you may live and inherit the land the Lord your God is giving you. You must not plant any kind of tree as a sacred Asherah pole near the altar of the Lord your God, which you build for yourself. You must not erect a sacred pillar, a thing the Lord your God detests. God, thank you for reminding us throughout this whole chapter that I've been reading from the Bible. Not only are you the Lord, our God, but all of this is according to the blessings that you've given us. So when we offer up tithe, it's not just the extra that we feel comfortable giving each week. It is the 10% of everything that you've given us. So in reality, that isn't just money. And we should probably stop and think about that. The totality of everything you've given us is just overwhelming to me. Absolutely overwhelming. And for you to give us all of that and only ask for obedience of 10% back is, is just amazing to me. But I think it's hard uh, initially or as a new Christian or sometimes even as an older Christian to really get that concept of tithing because it's not really tithing. It's trusting you that you will definitely take care of our every single need and and we see that when you took care of everything that Israel needs and we should really be able to very clearly see that in our own lives how you definitely take care of every single thing we need so it shouldn't just be what we're comfortable giving our ties should actually make us almost well probably very uncomfortable so that we can rely on you so we can depend upon you so we can trust in your promises as the Lord, our God, who blesses us beyond measure. Thank you, God. In your son's name I pray. Amen. <music>